Greg Tupper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com here at the THSCA Coaching School and Convention in San Antonio with our buddy. How long have we been doing this? The head coaching thing or the coaching thing? I mean, you and I talking. Oh, uh, you know, this is probably going on year five. Probably going on We're like, This is like one of the longest relationships I've ever had. <laughs> it's Mike Bloomgren, the head coach at Rice. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing so, great. So how has your coaching convention, how's your coaching school been? You know what? This is such a fun time, mm-hmm. right? Like, yes, it is like, okay, it's almost go time. It's almost goodbye, dear football is here. But it's also like the excitement ramps up. And even like the week before this, you're like, I'm going to get to see so-and-so. I'm going to get to see John Snell. I'm going to see John K. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to get to see Bob Waker. I'm going to get to see the guys that I love to talk to. And so that's exciting for me and, and for our staff to get to interact with all these great coaches. And, you know, it's always amazing how many nuggets we come back from, from other staffs. Like just talking about, hey, this is how so-and-so is doing this or – uh, I had a great conversation with this guy, and that's what's so fun to me, whether it's, hey, I'm hanging at the beach and I get to interact with these coaches or I'm here or, you know, anytime we get a chance to talk football. It's yeah. pretty fun. And this time of year is really fun because every coach is thinking about football, but they're actually not busy yet, so it's like you're not bothering them. You know, it's like, oh, no, I, I have all the time in the world to talk football, you know? Isn't that the truth? It is. That's, <laughs> that's why we get you here. Um, all right, let's talk some rice owls. Yep. Um, we... Feel like we're moving in the right direction slowly, getting there, right? Um, when you take a look back now that some time has passed in the 2021 season, how do, you, how do you assess what you guys were able to do last year? We were able to play competitively, and we weren't able to finish at the rate we wanted. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons uh, why I, I say that that happened. Some people would refer to them as excuses, so I'm not going to bring them out and throw them into the atmosphere. Uh, what I am going to do is talk about, you know, like we won four games, which is more than that program has won since, mm-hmm. gosh, 2014 or 15, whatever it was. And uh, we lost two games in overtime that could have got us bowl eligible. And that is our goal. We want to get to a bowl game and win it. And when we get an opportunity to do that, I feel like we'll be able to do that every year in the future. And uh, winning certainly breeds winning. And we know that. Uh, there's a, a mindset that has changed within our team. There's a culture that's changed. And uh, we got two quarterbacks coming back that – are pretty exciting, you know, when you mm-hmm. talk about what both of those guys did in their last appearances. If you'd like to name a starter here, break some news here on the show, we're, we're happy to have it. Well, the floor is yours. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to do that with that <laughs> training camp. <laughs> That's probably smart. Um, yeah, because I think you're right. When you, when you take a look at what you guys were able to do last year, you're in a lot of games. You're in a lot of games, and just it's two, th- you're, I mean, how many plays away from bowl eligibility do you think you are? Well, when you lose two games year? in overtime. I was going to say, two. Like two plays. You're, yeah. two, you're two maximum three plays away, <laughs> yeah. right, from, from being bowl eligible. Does it – I'm interested in, in what, the, what the room is like, what the, what the locker room is like, because there's some places that something like that, that would be – that would breed defeatism. It's like, oh, it's never going to happen for us. Do you, do you feel like your guys are still motivated and this is serving to motivate those guys to, to get to that finish line? 100%. Yep. There's nobody in our organization that ever wants to feel that way again. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to do whatever it's going to take, and, and they're taking those steps. So they understand that, look, if you want it to be different than it's been, you have to do something different than you've done, and, mm-hmm. and they understand that. Our standard has raised every single year, and, and so have our wins, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. They have not gone up at the rate I expected or wanted them to. But we're making progress, and, and this is a big year for us, and we're excited. I think it is a big year for you. And, and, and a reason I think there's plenty of uh, reason for excitement, I look at your defense, and I especially look at the back end of your defense. And I think you you know, I think you guys could have one of the best secondaries in Conference USA. I think you've got an opportunity to really make some, make some noise on the back end of the second defense. I agree with you 100%, and I don't want to take anything away from that group, but I actually think the strength of our team may be the defensive line. Oh, really? And you know how that's going to work mm-hmm. together. Uh, rush and coverage work together very nicely. So as you talk about those being the two best units, certainly of our defense, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be excited, especially on, on the defensive side. Offensively, um, you bring back three starters on the offensive line, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I, I thought last year that offensive line struggled at times. Do you feel like there's a next step for them that they can take in, in, in 2022? There absolutely is. And it's it's three starters, every down starters, if you will. Uh, but then it's bringing back a center that started pretty much every mm-hmm. game the year before that broke his ankle in week three last year. So in a lot of ways, it's four starters, and we've got to find a right tackle that's going to be uh, very good and, and be able to play to the standard that I think that group can. I think our offensive line is going to take a big leap. You know, I, I know I sit up here and I sound so positive about this, our team and this and that, but 
it's really what I believe. Yeah. No, and, and there's there's reason to believe that. And and you've got some playmakers. Um, Ari Broussard, I think, at, at the running back spot is, has an opportunity to have a, a really big year. Um, do But, you know, the question's always going to come back to quarterback, right? Again, not putting you on the spot. But is it fair to say that you need more consistency from the quarterback spot? It is. And yeah. we need the guy to be upright. We need him to play yeah. whoever the starter is. We need him to play every game, right? Yeah. Like, we're, we're all so much better with our number ones out there. And, you know, one thing I said in my media availability today is, like, what's the biggest difference in our roster is what somebody asked me. And it's like, well, the fact that we actually have depth and mm-hmm. that I, I could tell you that we have two deep pretty much in every position, whereas just two years ago we were really excited because we thought we had 11 that were good enough to compete. Yeah. You know, and now if we got 22 on both sides of the ball that can compete and I don't have to drop to my knees and pray the moment somebody breaks a shoestring, then that that's really nice. Yeah. And the same is true at the quarterback position. You know, you look at Wiley Green, uh, would beat UAB, the defending conference champs, at their place, and he was the offensive player of the week in the conference. In the next series, he breaks his ankle, yeah. and that's as unfortunate as it gets. But that's that's college football. And uh, so, but his last performance, judging him on a small body of work, but his last body of work, we're pretty excited about the ascent of Wiley Green and, and where this career has taken him. And then uh, in our last ball game against La Tech, we're down 10 when T.J. McMahon comes in, mm-hmm. and he leads us to victory. And, and in some ways, he willed us to victory. He was mm-hmm. awesome in the huddle. He was staying in there, looking down the barrel of a defender, hitting him in the face and, and making big-time throws. And he jumped in our defensive huddle. He said, get me the ball back. We'll go win the game. And, like, that mindset has so much value. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not – uh oh! Like here it goes again. This is no, no, no. Give me the ball. We're gonna win the game. And it has it has it has value at every position, but especially quarterback. Oh. I mean, that's that's different. That's special. You know, it is. Um, all right. So, bowl is it's it's bowl or bust for 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 the Rice Owls. Pretty much, no doubt about that. Yeah, and I learned that that again. Like Dennis Franchoni taught me, like you never talk about just going to a bowl. We're going to a bowl to win it. Yeah. And so that's the goal. Mm-hmm. You've had a, a bit of a makeover on your staff in the uh, the recruiting department. You've you've hired a couple of folks we are familiar with. Yep. Jessica Moore is your new director of on on campus recruiting. You hire uh, the TikTok coach Marco <laughs> Regalado yep. as well. Um, so some big changes in the recruiting world as well. Yeah, and two more uh, additions, if you will, in that department that we made. You know, bringing in Lee Menifee to be our director of recruiting operations. He's an unbelievable organized human uh, that does a great job keeping our staff on track and also communicating with admissions and, and everybody else at, at Rice, which you can imagine the value that has. Mm-hmm. And uh, we brought in a graphics guy named Zach Cordaggi, and he has just been killing it. I love what he's done. Uh, and then we're hiring two more positions probably next week, and then we'll kind of have that that department in a good place for now. Did you get to go to the beach over 4th of July? I did. Okay, I figured. That's what every coach does. Every coach just think like there's you, – you basically only get like – 10 days off in a year and so it's like oh you know go to the go to the beach where, where was the beach uh it was in the panhandle of florida on 30a between Destin and panama oh, city good for you yes sir nice time. all right um finally maybe finally i don't know we'll figure out um i understand now i was not at the uh fbs coaches panel up there i wasn't in there but i heard that on a panel with all 12 fbs coaches <laughs> You know where I'm going? Yep. Steve Sarkeesian's there from Texas. Jimbo Fisher's there from Texas A&M. Joey McGuire from Tech. They're all there. And the question they pose to you, the head coach at Rice, is about NIL. Um, <laughs> did, did, did you ask him to ask you that? I mean, Absolutely not. Little, <laughs> and that's the first thing I catch, said to catch, Craig Way. I, catch you like, by surprise? I think there's a few more people on here that would be more qualified <laughs> to talk about this. Uh, than me, but <laughs> I, I answered it to the best of my ability. Yeah, I, well, uh, you know, it's more and more. And, and and finally, I do have to ask you, I'd be remiss if I did not ask you about conference realignment. Yep. Because there are changes coming down the pike for the Mighty Rice Owls, and, and uh, I'm interested. It's not really your decision, but I'm interested in your perspective on, on everything that's going on with Rice. Just excited. Yeah. Just excited for what it's already done for our program, the mm-hmm. commitment that we've made to – uh, taking the, that great stadium and the, the great bones that it is and turning it into something that's uh, more modern is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we've done for our kids this off season, from a nutrition standpoint, from just every way we can help our student athletes maximize their potential, our administration is diving in and doing it. And that, that's a fun thing to be a part of. It's very cool. You know, growing the recruiting department, understanding what we're going to be going against. It's going to be a little bit different in the AAC. 
And again, trying to take the steps we need to take this year in Conference USA and, and not, certainly not looking past any of that. Uh, but having people on the staff that understand the, the big picture and, and the things that we're going to have to do as we're going forward, and, and they're making those things happen, and that's a lot of fun. Mike Bloomgren, head coach of the Rice Owls. We always appreciate your time. Um, I guess, like I said, you know, we, we talk like once a year. I can just text you. I'm just calling you. And we can just, Anytime we you just want. chat. Anytime you, know you want. I mean? Appreciate you, my friend. Good to see you, man.